Okay, good morning, you sassy bastards. I'm standing above a feet of body of water, but uh, luckily there's not that much mosquito action going on. It's, the mosquito action is real out of here. Sometimes it's only in certain areas, um, in other areas where you think there'd be mosquitoes, there's none at all. But anyway, I decided to stand at the base of a giant uh, ficus right here, and today we're looking at uh, some of the uh, maradioid ferns in the genus Angiopterus. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to draw attention to the fact that Eusporangiate ferns are one of the more, quote, basal lineages of ferns, that is, they differ from uh, leptosporangiate ferns, and that their sporangia all arise from a cluster of cells as opposed to one. But the real thing you just got to focus on is that they're, they're, they're basically an older lineage, you know. Equisetums and uh, adder's tongues and whisk ferns are all eusporangiate ferns. Massive, massive angiopterus vector. I mean, look, we're talking fronts, you know, 14 feet across. Those, uh, look at those eusporangia. Real old lineage right here. Real famous. Of course, uh, radioid ferns being uh, eusporangia, which means this... this the spores uh, emerge uh, from a cluster of cells as opposed to just one. Look at how fucking huge. It's like a goddamn... It's, it's a fucking central recce, the diameter of a 2 by 4 You know? Oh, what's going on there? wonder what those are going to uh, turn into. So there's, there's the, I guess what you would call the trunk, the caudex. It's, you know, probably two and a half feet uh, across. Here, of course, is at the rachis. Look how just massive it is. Definitely uh, above caning size. This is, you know, this could almost be structural, you know. So you were going to build a little lodge, you know, or a tent or something. Little, uh, you know. Am I going off out on a limb right there? Anyway. It's 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 so big across, very thick, sturdy, needs to be because the goddamn fronds are upwards of, uh, you know, again, 14 feet. You can see these uh, sheaths that the uh, fronds come out of. Again, uh, in one single frond uh, is up to like 20 feet in length. They're just massive. Just a massive bastard. Massive central rachis to be the rachis. I mean, this thing, this whole thing is so, you know, we're talking three and a half feet tall, you know, almost three feet across. You got a, you got a rachis that's, that, you know, that feels like a two by four in his own, you know, about the, the width of one. And, uh, you know, the individual fronds, of course, go upwards of, uh, well, this looks to be about 22 feet long right there, you know, so you're about three meters. You know, just almost too big to, you know, have in any, uh, any conservatory, you know, which is the only place you can really see these in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, if you're in the United States. Garfield Park Conservatory uh, has one of those, you know, over on the west side, you know, in Chicago. There's those massive scales. We got another genus of uh, maradioid fern over there. Can I can I ask you a question? Did you just are you trying? Did you do this consciously, huh? Or is that just you know just a coincidence? You look like a goddamn bryophyte. It's a uh, you know is it for the birds so you don't get snatched up? What are you doing, huh? It's a it's a fashion faux pas. You and you and this goddamn uh, moss are dressed the same. Lifestyles of the uh, Selaginaceous and uh, famous beautiful Selage.
you could go in a Celage dungeon, you come out a whole different person, you know. Spend a couple days in there. I'm telling you, just go go to the conservatory, you know. Hide out, get locked in there after hours, even after the uh, the goddamn janitor's gone. You know, another primitive lineages. Vascular, you know, they, they're vascular, but uh, God, look at it. Oh, that's nice. Look at that geometry. Look at that patterning. So nice. Definitely quelling any uh, homicidal feelings uh, you might have had at the uh, beginning of this vid. Here we go. Another uh, species of Maradioid fern. This one uh, in uh, the genus Tysana. Tysana with a P. Used to be in Maradia. Oh, it's kind of a dirty underside. Not ideal. You see, this one's got a darker stem with a different texture. Excuse me, a darker rachis. Which is basically just the uh, long petiole. Darker stem with a central rachis. And these are technically, uh, I guess you could call them uh, tripennate, bipennate, whatever. They got this. They got another rachis that comes off the rachis that comes off the central rachis. Oh yeah, see those eusporangia just waiting to go? Not quite mature yet. Okay, there you go, another diagnostic difference uh, between that, that Tysana, artist formerly known as Maradia, and uh, Ingeopterus is that wrinkling and a goddamn uh, Reiki right there, you know? Looks like it needs some Botox. Very diagnostic, different color too. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a nice close-up of that uh, Maradioid fern, uh, Sporangia. Just looks like a little, uh, kind of like a little fortune cookie. You know, just with, with that little slit on it. You Sporangia at the money shot right there. Okay, pretty interesting one here. Eleocarpus, Eleocarpaceae. I wasn't familiar with this family until I seen one of them in Chile. Oh, nice gust of wind to fuck up that recording. Uh, anyway, you see they got those uh, red senescent leaves. Kind of help you uh, see them from far away, you know. Almost got a little euphorbia thing going on there. I shouldn't even say that, no relation at all. But uh, euphorbias do sometimes have those uh, those red uh, red leaves. Anyway. You can see uh, flowers are pendant. Let's get up close, take a closer look. Oh yeah, lots of fringe. Lots of fringe. I can't, uh, let me see if I can actually get one of these flowers off. Oh, that's nice, there you go. Yeah, okay, so you got five sepals, five fringed petals, and uh, looks like a dozen stamens or more. And then you got that uh, style poking out. A little orange. Orange discs around on the ovary. Massive tree. And then uh, here's a... Uh, you can see these, these bastards got the uh, pollinate already. All right, anyway, there you go. Eleocarpus, Eleocarpus. If you're a jackass like me, you can pronounce it like that. Anyway. Large tree. Pretty interesting family, too. I don't think you get many in the, uh, in the U.S., though. Oh, look at that. Someone's trying to do a little macrame. How crafty. Anyway, you got a ficus species strangling another tree. Right there. I can't tell what the other tree is because I, uh, you know, can't get up there. But uh, maybe I could climb. Anyway, it's pretty interesting. I'm just, you know, strangling the shit out of it. Some people learn to that. You know, maybe it's kind of like a kinky thing. You know, I don't know. <laughs> It's just tons of uh, epiphytic ferns up top there. That's nice. Probably some orchids too. Nice Agathis morii. Dinosaur conifers. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, we're going back to the Carboniferous here. Here you got that nice Moradia, aka Tysana. And then uh, right up there, you got just got a massive tree fern, and then right behind it, you can't kind of you can't really see it. It's blocked by that tree, but got a, another species of tree fern. If I could just, how the fuck? Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It gives you a little idea what life might have been like, uh, you know, 320 million years ago, maybe. Okay, so we're apparently stuck in a fern dungeon here. That wasn't intentional. That'd be uh, be my fault. But anyway, let's uh, let's just kind of roll with it. See where it goes. Got another species of fern right here. Pretty interesting. This guy got a nice uh, rusty fuzz on the uh, underside. Pretty stiff rickies. Pretty stiff. You know, just like uh, some people tend to be sometimes. Kind of kills me. You know, you try to break them up a little bit. You know, get them to crack. Let me get a laugh out of them, but. Uh, you know, some people, it's just for the lawyers and accountants in the audience. No offense. Anyway, there you go. There's that. Real nice, uh, fuzzy nougat. Look at that. That's pretty nice. That's really nice. It's really nice. Possibly a member of the Glycinaceae. You know, and just that uh, dichotomous branching thing. That whole thing's working out really good for you. You know, I'm feeling it. It's pretty, pretty good. You can see just forms a massive. Yeah, you know, we're just standing on the road here. Some people just drove by. Some French teens, they yelled something at me. Couldn't really understand it. You know, I don't speak French. Your slurs have no effect on me. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. That's pretty nice. You got a nice clambering milkweed vine. A nice clambering hoya. Touch my, uh, touch my corona and my gynostegium. Let me see if I can get up close without uh, falling off this log I'm perched on. Look at the hoods. You see the five hoods? Technically not petals, they're hoods. The milkweed flower morphology there. Have you had enough? Got those sepals pulled back. Oh, excuse me, petals pulled back. Sepals are behind that. Let's see if we can... Uh, What's the back of those look like? Oh yeah, okay, see the, the sepals are almost indistinct. You know, right off each little uh, pedestal right there. Five sepals and then five uh, recurved uh, petals. Reflexed, rather. Just a beautiful umble. Such a nice umble. You got such a nice umble. Anybody ever told you that? Huh? How do you say that in French? Of course, you got the uh, opposite uh, leaves. I got a Hoya in my uh, kitchen window that uh, I've been un unable to kill for about four years. Got it the flower after I fertilized it once. Who doesn't love a Hoya, huh? A real asshole. Okay, nice meradioid fern gallery right here. You can see they're uh, so massive they basically create a small canopy. There's that, uh, the texture of those uh, famous rakei. Okay, bringing you back to the Carboniferous. Massive, uh, it's a massive codex. And who knows how old this guy is? You know, it could be very old. It's likely very, very old. You get that shaggy uh, texture. Did you call that flacos? I guess you could call that flacos. Pretty interesting uh, climbing fern right here. 
You got the sterile fronts and you got the uh, fertile fronts. Oh, that fuzz is sporangia. Sporangial fuzz. See, ferns don't have to be boring. They can actually be pretty cool. You just gotta learn a little bit about them, I guess. The fuck is this tree it's in? Holy shit. Oh, you look good for a shelf fungus. Look at the colors on that. They're gonna steal that and, um, you know, make it into a design for some, uh, a yuppie's countertop. What's your, what's your underside look like, eh? You got some pores? You got some nice pores? Have you ever stared at a sledge while listening to the Delphonics? Oh, that's nice. And then just, uh, you know, coming up on the ground, you see that the uh, parallel venation, those large leaves, obviously an orchid, get up a little close, look at the flowers. Kind of weird, though. Kind of weird for uh, an orchid, you know. You got a uh, bunch all clustered together in that, uh, that uh, racine, but it's kind of bending over, you know. It's kind of bending over, and they're pending now. It's kind of odd. How's that, how's that labellum look? You got a nice little pattern, nice pattern inside that that uh, perianth right there. And uh, look at those nice breaks, nice breaks uh, subtending every pedestal, every uh, stack holding those flowers up. That's a weird one. Why does it bend over like that? Why did Why does it do that? Why does it do that? Like when I say it like that, super loud, you know, just incensed, you know, <laughs> just mad about something because I don't understand it. Huh? You like when you see that trait in people, huh? You don't understand, so they just get mad. Better than being scared, though. I guess it's kind of the same thing, though, huh? Look at this massive tree fern. It's got to be a uh, 60 or 70 footer right there. Possibly Cyathea. I hey, got a close look at that trunk. It's all covered in lichens and uh, algae and cyanobacteria and whatnot. This looks like a bunch of little roots. Even got a Mesipterus. It's uh, speaking of Eusporangia ferns. It's another Eusporangia fern, along with that. Uh, that Angiopterus and Tysana I was showing you. Not related to them, but another Eusporangia at the fern. This one in the whisk fern family. Just growing epiphytically on this massive goddamn uh, tree fern right here. Again, it's probably Cyathea intermedia. As you can see, it started pissing on me. It started raining a little bit. A uh, mild storm blew in, you know. But that's fine. No worse for the wear. Still a good great day to be out botanizing at about 500 meters elevation in uh, the humid forests of uh, central New Caledonia. Anyway, the plant I want to show you is another infamous plant, another notorious plant. They teach this in the botany textbooks all over the world. And uh, this is a plant that's uh, famous for being the only living member of a lineage that is credited with being the oldest lineage of all flowering plants. It is a broke off from the rest of the flowering plant lineage, the angiosperm lineage, about 130 million years ago. And that plant will be this guy over here, which is a relatively common, if not diminutive, uh, on these hills in this little ravine. This is Amborella trichopoda. So there you go. You can see it's got the it's got somewhat undulate margins. That is wavy margins uh, to those leaves right there. It's got uh, alternate alternate uh, phyllotaxy. As opposed to opposite, you know, pretty waxy, no hairs, and you could just see a—it's, uh, I believe, it's cephaluros 
uh, just kind of speckling it. That's not insect damage. But uh, either way, as you can see, it's just poking out and speckling those leaves right there. Now this is not, this is by no means, you know, a dominant plant here in an understory. It doesn't get that big. It's got kind of a, a weird, a weird uh, structure to it. You know, multiple stems often doesn't get too tall. You know, I've seen them about 15 feet tall at the most. And plants, of course, are dioecious. You get some more over here. Dioecious meaning that the, the plants tend to be male or female. I believe they're mostly wind pollinated, but they can be insect pollinated too. And it's sad because you see this thing and you wouldn't think, you wouldn't know offhand how important it is scientifically and taxonomically in terms of uh, the history of life on Earth. But supposedly this is a, you know, a descendant of uh, one of the uh, lineages that got that whole angiosperm thing going. You know about the angiosperms, you know? Basically the uh, entire basis of the food chain here on planet Earth. Anyway, here's another one. This one's a female. Let me see if I can uh, bring some fruits down to show you. She got some fruits on her up there. There you go, there's a couple of fruits. Of course, the flowers are exiled. You know, they just come uh, come right off that main axis. And again, this is a female. Males, males, the male flowers are kind of in the same position. They're in the same position as where those berries are, but they tend to be just little globular clusters of anthers, you know, that kind of split open. And again, I mean, this is that's a perfect example of your typical uh, Amborella trichopoda habit right there. You know, multiple trunks, definitely not the tree-like by any means, just kind of looks like a nondescript shrub you'd see in uh, somebody's yard. But again, it's uh, the poster child for uh, angiosperm evolution. You know, most of the, the angiosperms, when they took off, might have been aquatic, you know. They might have been, uh, you got that whole Archaefructus thing that's, uh, I believe, credit would be in the oldest fossil angiosperm from roughly about 125 million years ago from China and you know again they weren't showy they didn't have petals nothing fancy by any means just kind of bare bones uh, bare bones sexy parts the population and I've seen probably 30 or 40 here uh, is mostly the population mostly tends to be a uh, female from what I've seen There you go. Do you know how famous you are? Huh? Do you have any idea? Everybody knows about you. Look, he's, he's beneath the Angiopterus. Or excuse me, that's the Tysana. You see that uh, wrinkled uh, rachis right there? Boy, there you go. You could see, uh, you could see some uh, flower buds. You know, not open yet. Buds are only about, I don't know, two millimeters. Is that like? It looks about two millimeters. And again, these uh, those petioles are distinctive, at least for me. You know, how they kind of fade from that brown to a uh, a more red color. Kind of waxy, they look kind of waxy. Yeah, my whole uh, goddamn pants are just soaked, you know. It's just, it's just, you know, I feel like I got out of the warm bath. Actually, this is a little bit chillier of a bath. I think it might be time to wrap this up soon. Anyway, it would be worth mentioning uh, another thing about the, the Amborella. Those fruits are just... Another thing about the Amborella. Is, uh, it's got tracheids instead of vessel elements, which just means the vasculature. You know the tubes? The tubes that go up and down, at least in this case pertaining to the xylem. Uh, you know, most flowering plants have what are called vessel elements. They're a little bit more of a uh, efficient way of transporting water. A little bit more efficient of a means of transporting water. Not Amborella. 
Amborella, like conifers, has tracheids, uh, which is uh, pretty remarkable too. You know, just another sign of its uh, its ancestry. You know, and its standing is uh, the oldest living member of uh, the ancestor of flowering plants. Again, those petioles too, they just, look at the, the way they reflect. See that angle they kind of bend back at? And again, that cephaluros lichen just uh, just speckling all the uh, all the leaves. They must look notched right there. Not notched, but you know, they got a little, those little dots on the margin. Almost lobed. Just seen a massive uh, flying fox dip out of one of these trees up there. Cute little bastards, you know. Who knows? Who knows what potential pathogens it's carrying? But uh, anyway, I got it. You know, I gotta. I gotta get out of here. There you go. You got. You got enough of this. You got enough of this? I'm sweating. I'm not sweating. I'm just wet as hell. It's actually a pleasant temperature out, but, uh, you know, I just feel like I've been sprayed with the hose for about 10 minutes. A little water coming off the plants. Again, this is the largest one I've seen. I have not seen any males in this population. They all seem to be females, but uh, a pretty remarkable plant nonetheless. Deserves uh, far more attention than it gets. Again, the ancestor of the entire base of uh, the food chain for human civilization, that being flowering plants. Because huh? you're not eating too many conifers. Maybe you dabble in some pine nuts, you know, around fall. But uh, aside from that, you know, if you're making pesto, okay, you're not making pesto out of angios. Well, I guess you, you use a little basil. But, uh, you know, most of the base of the food chain, and all I'm trying to say is that they're angiosperms. You know, they're the, they're the flowering plants. And this guy is, uh, you know, a relative of the ones that started it all. All right, that's all I got for tonight. I'm wet as hell. I'm soaked. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, meradioid ferns right there. It looks like a Tysonic. Uh, it's time for me to get the hell out of here. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening and uh, take care of yourself. Be nice to each other and what the shit. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Look at this guy. Look at him. He just... Oh, look at it. Look, he's, I think he's... Is he trying to sting me? What's he doing over there? Oh, and it smells terrible. He just put something out that smells like hell. It smells like rotten fruit. That's enough of that. Okay, you don't got to keep doing it. All right? All right, I'm not trying to eat you. I'm just having a look. That's all. Do you like Amborella? Huh? Oh. That's kind of gross. You know what that looks like? Look at a new growth on the amble. Huh? New growth on the amble right there. Yeah, that's right. Move along, buddy, okay? Move along.